Okay, so we made it through Article 210, which is always a, a big ordeal. When I'm teaching a live class, um, like there, there's a big deal. Like once I get past Article 210, then I know I'm through the woods, right? So Article 210 is always a massive subject. Let's get into Article 215, which covers feeder circuits. 215.15 barriers. I love this change. I got to be honest. I think this is a really, really good requirement. Barriers over conductor terminals and bus bars that are supplied by feeder taps or transformer secondary conductors are now required. Okay, so looking at this panel board, uh, obviously we're talking about these big yellow things, right? They're relatively new and they're a, a great, in my opinion, a great safety enhancement that was first added in the 2017 code back in Article 408 and then moved in the 2020 code to 230.67c, I think, 230.62c, excuse me. And in the 2023 code, we took the language and added it in Article 215 for feeder circuits as well. So 215.15 says, look, if a switchboard, switch gear, panel board, or motor control center is supplied by a feeder tap or transformer secondary conductor, then the ungrounded bus bar or conductor supply terminals must be covered with barriers to prevent accidental contact with them while the disconnecting means is in the open position. Okay, so this does not apply to all panel boards, all right? Let's start with where this came from, which is the service disconnect, okay? So 230.62c says, listen, at the service disconnect, if you have uninsulated, unguarded utility terminals, right? Service conductor terminals, they have to be protected with a piece of plastic or something similar to prevent accidental contact. And the reason for that is this. If you're working on this panel, let's say it's the service disconnect, if I shut off the main breaker, everything downstream of the main breaker is off. But those two ungrounded supply terminal, uh, supply conductor terminals are still energized. So that means if I shut this breaker off and I get into this panel to change a breaker or something, guess what? You're violating OSHA. And you're violating NFPA 70E because you're not working in, a, in an electrically safe work condition. You're doing unjustified elect, uh, energized work. You would have to call the utility, have the utility come out, pull out the meter. <sighs> Look, let's, can we just be honest? Nobody's doing that, right? I mean, seriously, we, we tell electricians to work safe and then we don't give them a realistic way to do it. So by putting in these barriers, it means that you can shut off the breaker and everything downstream of the breaker is off everything upstream of the breaker is insulated. So that means I can shut this off and I can work on this panel legally and more importantly, and work on it safely, right? Without undue exposure to electric, uh, to electric shock or potentially arc flash. The same concept applies here if the panel board is supplied by a feeder circuit, okay? Or by, by, a, by a transformer secondary. So let's say I've got a transformer and it supplies a panel board. Now, of course, when we have a transformer supplying a panel board, 99.9% .9 of the time that transformer is going to have a main breaker because the panel board itself has to have a worker protection and the transformer secondary conductors have to have overload protection on their secondary side. So, you know, between 240.21C and 408.36, I think it's C as well, uh, you're going to have a main breaker in your panel board that's supplied by a transformer, usually. Shut that thing off and you're in the same position. Everything downstream of the main breaker is off, but the conductors feeding the panel board are still on. Now, when it comes to a customer owned, you know, premises transformer, if you had to work on that panel board, you could always go back and turn off the primary, right, supplying the transformer, and that would de-energize the transformer and the panel you're working on. Now, that might be a realistic way to do it, but here's the problem. What if that transformer supplies multiple panel boards? So I've got a transformer with three different sets of secondary conductors. Now, if I wanna work on one of those panel boards and I've got the secondary conductors terminating, I shut off the main breaker, everything downstream is off, but the transformer secondaries feeding that panel are still energized. Not quite as easy, to just walk over and turn the whole transformer off because now I'm not just turning off the panel I'm working on, I'm, tur I'm turning off multiple panel boards. That's gonna be a little bit trickier to do. So this section says, listen, put these plastic things over the, tr over the transformer secondary conductor terminals, 
and that way you can shut it off everything downstream is off everything upstream is insulated you've got the two little holes here that allow me to you know put my meter in and, and verify the absence of voltage before I start getting into it and establishing you know an electrically safe work condition so in my opinion this change adds a lot of safety and it does it for two bucks worth of plastic love this change now this applies to transformer secondary conductors for the reason that I just explained it also would apply to panel boards that are supplied from a feeder circuit for the exact or, or from a feeder tap for the exact same reason you know a tap conductor could just supply one load but usually if I have feeder taps I've got like a 400 amp breaker for example I come out of it and then I tap and I do two 200 amp panel boards well, same concept. You're going to have to go main breaker on those panels to supply overload protection for the feeder taps in accordance with 240.24b. And the panel board has to have overcurrent protection to satisfy 408.36. So you're going to have a main breaker. Shut up that main breaker. Everything downstream is off, but those two terminals for the panel board are still hot. Two or three, right? If we're talking feeder taps, probably three. Same thing with transformer secondaries. So, Love this change, adds a lot of safety, addresses a real world issue, right? Not just some theoretical thing that could happen, but something that probably happens every day. And it solves it for two dollars worth of plastic. Love this change. So there you go, that's 215.15 .15 barriers.